You are listening to episode three of Cocktails and Chat. Are you a maker running your own handmade business? Do you love it, but sometimes wish you could go out for drinks with colleagues? If so, then you're in the right place. In this podcast, you'll get to meet a maker on each episode over a cocktail or mocktail. You'll hear about the challenges and joys of running your own business, and you'll learn about many different kinds of making. Just attempt your creative muscles. Mostly, you'll learn that you're in great company as a maker, solopreneur. I'm your host, Sarah Jane Slocum. I provide bookkeeping for makers and artisans. In this series, the spotlight's on having fun and getting to know each other. So relax and join us. Hello. Welcome to another episode, episode three of Cocktails and Chat. I hope y'all are having a fantastic first week back to um, to work. If you if you started this week, I actually have a few friends who who are starting next week. So, but in any event, I hope you have. Hi, Tori. I hope you have had um, a great restful break, and um, I'm just going to see if I can invite Krista Pels in. Krista from Krista Bells is going to be our guest tonight on Cocktails and Chat. Yes, so tonight we're having a blueberry and rosemary smash. Um, it has lemon juice and uh, and sugar in it. My husband was curious this morning about why they call it mocktail cocktails anyway, so we looked it up. And um, this was interesting. So in the 17th or 18th century, um, a cocktail was a... Uh, non-thoroughbred horse. It was a horse that had um, had its tail docked at some point. Oh, you're here. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it was like a, a cart horse or a draft horse or something. So if you were talking about a racing horse that wasn't a thoroughbred, wasn't a pure breed, then it, you could say that it was a cocktail horse. So it was not pure. So a cocktail drink is not pure alcohol. You've mixed in other things with it, particularly water. And now, after that random little diversion, that's how my brain works. How are you tonight, Krista? Yeah, I'm. apart from my technical difficulties, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> no worries. Uh, it's Instagram. It has given me trouble every time so far, but Anyway, no, no worries. Um, so this is Krista Mansfield of Christabel's Soy Wax Crystals. And at Christabel's, they create luxury soy wax crystals and with candles. Each of the candle scents are carefully matched to a crystal so that they work together in perfect harmony. Scent benefits and crystal energy work together for you. They're pure soy, vegan friendly, and cruelty free sounds bad and they smell wonderful <laughs> thank you <laughs> and the little information oh, no. cards that you put in with the crystals are at your soy being friendly and cool. sorry no that wasn't me <laughs> it was my um computer decided to start playing you on it <laughs> <laughs> oh the technology <laughs> And yet, without it, we would never be meeting. So, <laughs> so um, Krista, who are you? What do you do? And how did you get started? Well, um, I'm Krista, as you so beautifully introduced me. Um, I have Krista Bells, so that's um, my part-time business. Um, I'm also a part-time nanny, so I do that too. Um, and the the business sort of started for just over four years ago now. So that is takes up most of my time. 
um but i love it so it's it was started by a real love um and i think that's what keeps you going doesn't it it is absolutely that passion and i think feeling like you're making a difference yeah yeah so absolutely um and, and congratulations on four years that is Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Do you have big plans for the fifth birthday? That's a huge milestone. Uh, it's towards the end of the year, so not yet. <laughs> um, but it's it's in, in the pipeline um, to start thinking about, um, hopefully soon. But uh, with Valentine's and Mother's Day coming up, uh, that's taking a lot of time at the moment. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Got to prioritise. But... Yeah. <laughs> and what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm very boring. I've just got a fizzy water. <laughs> well, one day I will do these in person and I will bring the mocktails and cocktails yeah. to you. <laughs> <sighs> so, let's see. I wanted to talk to you about all things making, all things business, and some a few personal questions as well. So, how did you come up with crystals and candles together? Um, so I got into crystals um, just by chance. I kept sort of seeing them everywhere and I'm the type of person that just likes to jump in and do something. So I got myself some crystals um, and sort of went by the person who was selling them, went by their recommendations for what would be good for me. Um, and then I got them and I was totally hooked <laughs> the first time I, I sort of received them. Um, I was just completely drawn in by them. Um, and then I started reading and learning more and more and more. Um, and at times I just found it quite overwhelming. There's so much information out there um, that it was sort of all this flying at me. Um, and I knew the difference that had made to me in my life and I wanted to get that out to more people um, so that was the main thing uh, I, I wanted to find something to get them in people's hands in a really simple way um, and at the same time I was sort of learning more about what was around me what was in my environment um, I've always been a candle lover and I didn't quite realize so what was in candles so I was learning all about crystals and all about sort of all the, the nasties that can be in some candles. And I just thought, do you know what? They could just be together really beautifully. Um, and that, that's how I started. Saw a need and you filled it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I have, to, I, I have to confess ignorance. I am vaguely aware that there are nasty things in, ca in candles, but I don't really know what they are. So, but I, I see that you um, really uh, emphasize that you have soy wax. So why soy wax? And what, what nasties is it that you're avoiding generally, I, I guess? If... So most, well, not most candles, but a lot of candles. So the, the generic candles that you see in a lot of places are made from paraffin wax. Um, and there's, they either don't state that or it's um, on the labels as a mineral. Um, and I just don't think people are aware. Um, but it's a byproduct of um, the fuel industry. So you're effectively burning what they don't want. <laughs> um, and if it's not used for, for sort of petrol and diesel and stuff, it's just coming straight into into your candles um uh, okay. so, so, yeah. so we're doing the off product uh, uh, the byproducts of that are what's going yeah on the candles. yeah and it's it's mash produced and it's incredibly cheap um and i suppose that's how they can get their candles so cheap but what is that also burning <laughs> so um there's lots of carcinogens in there um and do you know that like, when you burn an, a, a candle and you get all the black soot everywhere um so our candles don't do that because they burn cleanly and um, so you're not getting all of that into the environment for you to breathe um and the reason that we chose the soy so soy there are lots of different soy that you can get 
um, it was really important for us to choose a soy that's sustainable. Um, so the the soy we get for every sort of bit of soy they they take away, they put more back. So they're not contributing to the deforestation, which we really didn't want. Um, and another reason we chose soy is because it's very slow burning. So for the same candle, the same size candle of a paraffin candle and a soy candle, you're getting a much longer burn and it's a steadier burn. So you're not also getting that um, real <laughs> overpowering scent that you sometimes get with candles that can bring on headaches and sort of itchy eyes, things like that. Um, so that's that's why we chose soy. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And um, I meant to check before we started. I just have one of your candles here. Yeah, you don't have the scary label on here. One time, some years back, I, I bought a candle in a gift shop to save in case I needed an impromptu gift for somebody, as you do. Yeah. And then I, I went to give it and I uh, well prepared to and I pulled it out and it had this scare label on it about this can cause death to marine animals or something like that and I was like oh my god I can't give this as a gift this is <laughs> what is this and so I didn't and um so I guess it's and then I noticed that it's on all the candles so I guess that's actually what you're what you're referring to then yeah straight like I know nothing about candles because I really don't I just burn them. <laughs> That's the thing. I didn't either. And then once you get sort of into the uh, vortex, you find out a, an awful lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that happens with loads of things. Um, the uh, um, I I got into the vortex of learning how to be self-employed and so on, and I uh, I had known nothing about it, and I I, knew, I didn't know the vortex existed, and it can yeah. Oh, Tori has asked, is any soy wax okay? She, oh, wow, you're really creative there, Tori, making your own candles. <laughs> um, I, I can't see comments on my end. <laughs> oh, right. Well, but, there's a first one so far that doesn't just say joined, so. <laughs> um, so, yes, I would say if you're making them for yourself, um, any soy wax is okay, but do check um the labels because a lot of them say soy and they actually put um beeswax in it or rapeseed in it or paraffin in it um so just really really do check why wouldn't beeswax be good i mean obviously if it's labeled as soy then you want soy but in general why wouldn't you want the beeswax? beeswax is okay to burn but if you're vegan not ah right yeah okay I'm not, yeah. so I forget. <laughs> um, right, so I also wanted to ask about your candles. You list them as having top notes, middle notes, and base notes. What are those, and how do you do that? So they are the order in which they're burned. So each of the different scent oils have a different burn rate. So the top notes are the ones that come off first. So when you light a candle, the top notes will be the ones that are released first. The middle ones are then released next. And then the base notes are the, the last ones. So it, it usually goes with sort of their viscosity. So the heavier, thicker oils like vanilla, amber, they are always the base notes because they just need that bit more heat to get going. The candle doesn't burn at the same heat the whole way through? No, like when you first light it, obviously the the flame starts burning, melting the wax. Um, and as it burns more and more wax, it gets warmer and warmer. Oh, okay, right. Okay, so are you, do you actually have to pour three lots of, of wax then? No, yeah. so it's all, all the oil, is mixed together. Um, oh, but then they, they'll sink and, and float? <laughs> no, they, they will all mix. Um, so when you're making the candle, the fragrance, all the notes are mixed together. So you melt, melt the wax, 
um, and then get it to the right temperature. And then you've got the fragrance already as one mixed lot together. Um, so oh, all the oh. notes are mixed in together. Right. Okay. And then yeah. when you start to burn it, the temperature yeah. of the flame, uh, the temperature of the oil chain. Okay. I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not layered within the candle. So every right. time you light that candle, you'll get all of those notes together. Um, but right. just, do you know, sometimes when you light a that. candle, you get one scent quite quickly and then it takes a while to sort of mellow into the others. So that's the top, the mid and the bass notes. I, I honestly thought it was like a three layer candle. I'm really glad <laughs> I asked. I've learned something here. Thank you. Yeah. So um, have you always wanted to run your own business? Um, I suppose... I suppose in a in a way, um, yeah, I when I was younger I was it was always what do you want to be when you grow up and everything I wanted to be was like have my own of. So when I wanted to be a vet, I wanted my own vet's practice. <laughs> um and when I wanted to be a beautician, I wanted my own beauty salon. So I suppose, yeah, it's always been in my head that I was going to have my own business even without realizing it so have you had many businesses is christabel's your first uh so i before before christabel's i was with a network marketing company um and i think that gave me the confidence to do it by myself um that it was possible um, and I wanted to be in control of what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. So then that made your sort of gradual stepping into entrepreneurship through the yeah. work marketing and then the uh, your own business with, your, with Christabel's, which is part-time and becoming more full-time. So I'm all about goals this week. I'm, uh, do you, what are some of your goals for 2022? Are you, are you aiming at any point to turn Christabel's into a full-time job? Um, yeah, that is the end goal. Um, I am very lucky to love my job, um, my nannying job as well. So I know at some point I will have to stop that. Um, but I've got, I feel like I've got a really nice balance at the moment. Um, because I don't, I only work there a certain amount of hours a week. Um, so a lot of my time can be put into Christabel's. Um, I know at some point uh, the balancing act will have to tip over to Christabel's. That's my uh, baby and that deserves my time when it's needed. And that's the goal. So good deal. Yeah. This year, any any goals for this year specifically yet? Um. Yeah, we've got a few. So my my one of my words for this year is um, strong, um, and that is it in all aspects. Um, and I think we are we are going to be launching a new um, collection that is very exciting. Um. And it's got quite a few new scents, um, so new scents and crystals, and it's very different. So I don't know if you saw my post yesterday with the leopard on it, um, mm -hmm. about uh, people's wildest dreams, and that that yeah, that's going to be the the main theme of the um, of the collection is to encapsulate all those dreams that we all have and pop them into a scent. How do you do that? My brain doesn't work that way. How, how do you look at a, a, an abstract concept like a dream and say this is what it smells like? So, like, for example, um, someone said about going to Disneyland and visiting Disneyland. So I think of all the, the feelings that you get when you visit these places and then scents that relate to those. So it's quite joyous and happy and positive and fun. 
so you've got to think of yeah you've got to think of all these sort of really happy vibrant scents so quite lemony citrusy um but a bit different because disneyland isn't your your bog standard holiday is it right right um Sorry, all I can think of is crowds, and, yeah. and I've never <laughs> liked crowds. <laughs> so yeah, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I, I okay. Um, so yeah, about um, with uh, bringing out different scents, does that require lots of new testing and labeling and and so on? Yes. <laughs> Lots. Were you lots. surprised by yeah. all of those sorts of things that are needed for candles? Yeah, so I just thought quite naively that you just got some wax and got some fragrance and mixed it together, put it in a container with a wick and you were done. But it is not that easy. Um, it, it's crazy how much testing needs to be done. Um, and how much thought needs to be put into it. It's every different scent we have requires different um, wicks, different temperatures. It, it's just, it's every, <laughs> every little bit we do for, the, for each candle can take so long because you never sort of put a combination together and it's, amazing straight away so you've then got to take the wick size up or the wick size down and then test again and then if that's not right then you test again and again and again um, and also after you've made the candle they have to um, be stood for a while so the wax and the oils all go together so but I, all the candles I've made today I can't test for another two weeks so it's just, um, and then obviously you test them and you know that they're not going to be all perfect the first time. So then you've got to tweak them and then wait another two weeks. And <laughs> it's just, it, we are okay. always more than a season ahead. Like we were, we were doing Christmas candles at the beginning of um, summer. So it's slightly off in our house with scents and seasons, but uh, it has to be done. <laughs> That must be really disconcerting. I, I am fairly rigid about my Christmas scents not coming out unless it's Christmas time. <laughs> it just throws me so much. Yeah. Um, we've had a question from Tori going back to talking about scents, mm -hmm. asking, because uh, she makes her own candles, can you give any tips on clean fragrances to add to candles? Most seem so toxic. Um, I think you've got to find some really good suppliers that you really trust um you've also got to know that the even uh, essential oils are do come with a toxic um rating um and warning so you you've got to sort of take that on and know where you are happy to sit um, and stand that this um, a certain um, warning on there look into it a bit more and work out why um, because a lot of them they they will trigger a warning on the sort of labels as a neat oil um, but that's a, a neat oil and you when you mix it with the wax, it then becomes so diluted um, that it might not trigger that. Um, a lot of the, the oils we have gone for, um, they are naturally based. So they are the same sort of chemical makeup as an oil found naturally, but they have been made specifically for candles. So they are safe with a flame um, that's the reason why I don't use a lot of essential oils because they they aren't safe with a flame. Um, so it's just really looking into where you're getting them from um, and 
which which ones you want to stay clear of, I suppose. So much research for everything in business, but especially your products. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, so what are your favorite and least favorite parts of running your handmade business? Um, my favorite parts are probably the um, the creativity. I'm quite creative. Um, I love getting stuck in. Um, I love creating something from scratch because we have the the raw ingredients and seeing something from the raw wax, uh, a container with nothing in and a, and a wick to a finished product, especially when it's been all photographed and at the end, I just know I've been on that whole journey with that one product, usually a candle. Um, but I remember all the ups and downs or the sense we think, oh, that would be fantastic. And then we do it and think, no, that doesn't embody everything we want this candle to be. So then you, you go backwards. And when you finally get that at the end, it is, it's incredible. And then when it's released to people and people come back and love it too, that's got to be my favourite. Um, my least favourite is probably the tax return. <laughs> Ah, so you just get me to do that, and you're yeah, concerned. yeah. It's every year. Uh, it just oh, it just fills me with dread. Just hmm. yeah. Well, good. Yeah, it, it's oh, and not even I. Once I get stuck into it, I'm absolutely fine. I think it's more that I know I've got to sit down and input everything. <laughs> um that just doesn't it doesn't excite me i'm not i i'm not a computer lover <laughs> i prefer to be making and not adding it yeah fair enough i think everybody prefers to do what they got in business to do yeah and that dread of the the thing that's looming is always so much worse than when you finally do it yeah almost yeah, and when, uh, when I when I actually sit down and do it, it's fine. It's mm. just uh, the organisation and the sort of pulling it all together, I suppose, that just takes time. <laughs> Tracy Williams has commented to say she loves your candle, or I'm sorry, they, I'm not sure Tracy, I do know male Tracy's going to take that. They love your candles. They are so beautiful. Oh, um, thank you, Tracy. Um, Looking for hitting the wrong button. <laughs> yes, that's yes. And I think Tracy commented earlier to say that she that they're really proud of you um, when we were oh. talking about you in business for four years. Lovely, thank you. Um, right. So, do you have any favorite crystals? Um, it can change daily. <laughs> Um, green aventurine and citrine are always on that list though um, so citrines for happiness and positivity and joy um, and green aventurine is for luck um, and then another one that I absolutely love is labradorite um, it's quite magical it's so when it moves it catches um, sort of and flashes so I love that it can look quite dark from far away. And then as, as you move it, it's just got this real magic about it. And I love it. Do you have any advice for organizing crystals? Pardon? Do you have any advice for organizing your crystals or my crystals, really? <laughs> um, organizing them within your home? Yeah. Um, I am very much on a, you do, do what you're drawn to do. Um, so they will, they will feel right in, in certain rooms. Um, if you're wanting to work with something specific, like if you're wanting more sleep, then obviously put those crystals by your bed. 
um, I would always say to people have some red carnelian by the door because it's a really good protector. Having, oh, I'm flashing there. Um, I quite like having little crystal bowls around the house um, to put some tumble stones in. That's quite a nice way to keep them. Um, and then, I, yeah, I, I would just say do what you're drawn to do. Um, pop, pop them in a room, either in a nice dish, um, on a, the, the, um, I don't, I don't know if you've got any bigger pieces, but the, uh, picture ledges that you can get, they're quite good right. for putting, um, them on. You can get some nice crystal shelves, um, but I always think it's sort of a work in progress that pop them in each room and then see if they're happy there and you're happy with them there. And if not, pop them in another room and they will let you know where they want to be. Thanks. Um, you are getting married in September. Yeah. What are you most excited about for your wedding? Um, oh, well, if you'd have asked me about a week ago, I probably would have said a lot of things. But since it's switched over to this year, I'm now really nervous. <laughs> um, I think yes. it's I think it's that thing of it's only now nine months away. Um, but I suppose I'm I'm most excited about everyone just being there. Um, it's been a, a couple of years of not seeing so many people that I just, I'm most excited to just see everybody there um, around us and just having a really nice relaxed time. Is it gonna be a big wedding, a small wedding? Um, no, not, no, not massive, about 65 people. That's, that's good, that's a good number. That way you can actually spend that time and it can be relaxed with those yeah. people. Yeah, we didn't yeah. want a, a massive, um, massive do that was quite overwhelming um and feeling like we're having to to organize where everyone is and um we want to speak to people on our day so that was right. important for us in two seconds with each person so yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and to actually see everyone's faces because it's so easily easy to miss people when there's hundreds of people yeah that sounds good. Are you getting, um, I forgot to mention in your introduction that you live in Oxfordshire. Are you getting married in Ox Oxford? I can say that word. I haven't even been <laughs> Yes, we are. We are, yeah. Um, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Um, well, if I couldn't live here? If, oh, or there. There yeah, be an yeah. I I do actually love living where we are, <laughs> so I would either choose here or um, southwest of France. That's where I spent a lot of summer holidays um, as a child and recently as well. Um, and there are lots of happy memories there. Lovely. I've never been to France yet. I did think once upon a time that I would move there, but. French is really hard for me. Yeah. Foreign languages are really hard for me. So. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah, France was never really an option. I, I didn't actually intend to move here. I just ended up falling in love with somebody who lived here. Yeah. Um, what's one thing you wish you had known when you started your business? Um, oh, gosh. Probably. Either of them. Pardon? Either of the businesses. Um, probably the... If, the now I've, I've got sort of a network. Um, but when I first started, you sort of go, go, go in all guns blazing. And it can be quite lonely. Um, so I wish I'd have sort of started that networking early on. Um, just 
to, to give a head start on uh, having some business buddies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tell you, it has been such a game changer for me to surround myself by, with entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, it, thankfully, I do actually have a really incredible supportive husband and supportive friends, but only a couple of those are entrepreneurs and, and the husband isn't. Um, so yeah, it's just that being able to bounce ideas off of each other that where you, you understand where you're coming from, you understand what you're going to. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, there's a lot in this world that we don't understand, can't understand almost until we're in it, I think. Yeah. So, and yeah. it's, it's, I find it's easier talking to people who are in the situation because you don't have to give them a backstory. So you don't have to sort of give that update before you then start with either the advice you want or or the, what you want to talk about. You can just go in, sort of bounce ideas off and say what's on your mind and they usually just get it. Yeah. Save so much time and, and aggravation when you get advice that you know that isn't isn't even right from your well-meaning loving friends and family who just don't get it. Um, what book or podcast would you recommend to your fellow makers and entrepreneurs? Um, I really love the Entrepreneurs Growth Club. That's one of my uh, ones I listen to a lot. Which I have to say is where we've met. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is uh, so it's both podcast and it is a group on Facebook. So, yes. What do you have coming up that you're excited about? Um, the new the new collection is my massive excitement at the moment. Um, the the Dream Wildly collection that is taking a lot of control to uh, stop smiling about it twenty four seven. <laughs> Oh, go on and smile, twenty-four. Yeah. Why not? Life needs more smiles, anyway. Yeah, that sounds great. But it sounds like we will be waiting a few months for that, maybe a couple months. Yeah, I'm. I am. Um, some of them are are pretty done, so it just depends on the last sort of three or four. Um, if they decide if to uh, weeks. <laughs> <laughs> if they play ball then we're all good and it will be next month but um it it's totally the ball's in their court at the moment so uh just keep your fingers crossed <laughs> we will do yeah. look forward to that one that sounds excellent although i'm really gonna have to skip the disneyland one i have to say yeah <laughs> A nice piece, I think. Um, where can our audience find you online? So I'm on both Facebook and Instagram, um, both under Christabels. And then I also have a website, which is www.christabels.com. Good. Oh. And the last question I have for you is, how do you know when a work is finished? So I guess for you, that's when a scent blend is complete. Um, when I'm happy with it. Um, when I have got to the bottom of my candle, um, my tester candle, and I have been happy with every single burn we've done. Um, we move candles around to different size rooms. So once all of those rooms have been ticked, that is when I'm happy with it. And obviously when I've paired it with a crystal, but that's usually happens sort of midway. All right, well, thank you so very much for coming on tonight. I have thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you and um, I hope that everybody watching comes and joins the community that we are building at um, Handmade Business Club UK, which I will put a link in my bio for. But um, yes, thank you so much, Krista. Of thank Krista you Bell. for uh, having me. <laughs> and have a fantastic night. And um, yeah, thank you. Yes. And you, thank you.
Okay. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cocktails and Chat, the podcast for building community among makers and artisans. If you'd like to continue the chat, please do join us in the Facebook group Handmade Business Club UK or join my mailing list at amethystraccoon.com slash newsletter. For the show notes with all the places to find Krista, please visit amethystraccoon.com slash cc3. If you liked this episode, please leave a rating or review. It really does help. Until next time, happy making and cheers!